Welcome to part two of creating a robot controlled by ChatGPT. In this video, we're going to be adding all these parts to the robot and giving it all its basic functions. Going to the voltage, ground, SCL, and SDA. Just like that. We're using these analog input pins and they're sending their signal through the I2C right here. We have to wire up the ultrasonic sensor. It's got four wires coming from it. We're gonna add four pins somewhere on here for those wires to connect to. We need five volts and ground for the sensor. This has five volts and ground right here. So we'll put it on the same pins, two of them on the same pins scoot that back we don't want to put these other two on these same pins as over here then that would put that on the i2c network connection network whatever um, and these are not going to that the signal from the sensor is going directly to the gpi o pins we can at least connect the power together and then we just have to be mindful of how we're running the wires from the sensor to here we need to figure out how we're going to do this microphone. Hmm. You said you were reprinting. Oh yeah. We have to reprint this anyways because that is not at a steep enough angle to be able to see a human if this robot's on the ground and a human's standing. Angle this back part up so the whole thing can sit at a higher angle. Here's the little speaker we're using. Do we not just also mount it to this? Yeah, I guess we can just, it's got a bit of a lip right there, so we could just 3D print, uh, when we got to redo this, we'll just put a hole somewhere for the speaker. Because it's, it's heavier. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, we'll run the speaker down here. We'll make this whole thing a little taller so there's room for the speaker. And then we'll mount the... Have this come to the front. Yeah. We'll make this little frame come forward a little bit and like up and around. Yeah, so we'll have, have that forward a little bit like that. We can add two pins to those same rows over here and get our power from there. The output of the microphone is going to one of these inputs over here on the ADC. So we just gotta pick one of those. We can add a single right angle pin over here on the ADC and have the right angle standing up. That way we can plug the microphone signal into that. We'll have that scooted down. That way we have room over here for the digital to analog converter. So that's that. We gotta add a few raw components to the circuit. So the first thing we're gonna do, the ultrasonic sensor right here, the output pin, the echo pin, is five volts output, but the Raspberry Pi uses 3.3. So we need to put a voltage divider on that output by using two resistors. We'll use a 10,000 ohm and a 4.7 thousand ohm. This will basically divide the voltage in half, put it around 2.5 volts, which will be perfectly safe for the Raspberry Pi. We only have to do that on the echo pin for the sensor. We don't have to do it on the trigger pin. So that's our voltage divider for the echo pin on the ultrasonic sensor. Now we need to make another divider. That way we can run it uh, to the battery and be able to measure the voltage of the battery. You have to measure the battery to know if it's dead, Morty. Oh geez. We have our two voltage dividers placed now. So now what we need to do is create the amplifier circuit. Pretty good. 
this last capacitor we added, the output of this is what will run to the speaker. I guess that's the full circuit. Yeah, now we just gotta solder it all together. Soldering's finished. Now all that's left is adding all the jumper wires, but we'll do that on the next video. For now, we're just gonna redesign this frame. So the initial plan was just to make this back tail part at an angle, but I have a better idea. Let's add a servo back here and allow it to raise and lower its tail so it can look up and down. This means we'll also need to add some connectors like these somewhere on the circuit for the servo to hook up to. I'm thinking over here, because we got the voltage in the ground right there that we can tap into, and then we can use this line for the signal. All right, time to redesign the frame. So that concludes part two. Next time, we'll finish all the wiring, put the code on it, and get to testing. If you like this video and want to see more, please hit that subscribe button.